The Lord be with you. Uh, some of you may have heard, some of you even helped, but on Monday morning, we were surprised by a flooded church office. Flooded from a burst, it had nothing to do with the rain, it was a burst water heater under the sink in the office. So we had an inch to an inch and a half of water in various parts of the office. And thankfully the, the slab slants ever so slightly that direction, so nothing came into the sanctuary. But it did begin to go into the choir room. Anyway, so it was an exciting morning, and that sort of shifted the whole week. Glad to see you here. We, um, were, uh, I, I suppose, uh, a cleaned office is sort of a symbol of baptism. And that's what the first Sunday after the Epiphany every year always is. We celebrate the baptism of Jesus. And we'll see what his baptism means for us. Uh, a couple of things to note in your bulletin. Because it's the baptism of Jesus, we're going to, rather than have the brief order of confession and forgiveness, have something called Thanksgiving for Baptism. Then, when it comes to the hymn of praise on page 5 of your bulletin, the, con uh, the congregation is only going to sing the refrain. And to help us, though, the men's chorus will sing through the refrain, refrain once first, then we will sing it, then they will sing the first verse, and we the refrain all the way through. Again, welcome. Glad you're here on this cold day. Please rise, and we'll prepare for worship through the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, of your, son, at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as your daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
is. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the waters they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as, as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who was called by my name, whom I created from my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. From Acts. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. 
The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon them, any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. Well, good morning. How many of you like the cold weather? Yeah, isn't this great? <laughs> Everybody know what this is? This is called a stole, but it's also to represent service. It's supposed to be like, uh, have you seen those pictures of oxen in the old days wearing a, um, a, a yoke on their shoulder to help them pull wagons and pull plows. Have you seen those pictures? Well, if you haven't yet, you will. But that, it's supposed to be... But this one has all kinds of symbols on it. Can anyone tell me what, what you know, for instance, believe it or not, th those are two rings. That's a symbol for marriage. This would be a symbol for Holy Communion. It's the chalice, the cup. Can anybody see the symbol for baptism? All right, Michaela. The seashell or the clam shell. Anybody know why that's a symbol for baptism? <laughs> What's that, Zach? I heard water. I mean, excuse me, not Zach, Carter. Clams have water in them, or they're living water. Well, some ancient, ancient pictures of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus shows John, Jesus standing in the river, and they're showing the Jordan River was maybe only about knee-deep, and John the Baptist standing in front of him, and John reaches down into the water and takes some water, and what he scooped the water up in was in a clam shell and he pours the water over Jesus' head. Isn't that something? So the clamshell has become a symbol for baptism. We see a clamshell up there at the flower decoration. So when you're baptized, oh, by the way, some, some pastors even have clamshells or they'll have one made out of silver and baptize people. 
I like to use my hand and pour water over your head. When Jesus bapt when you were baptized, God in Christ came to you and claimed you as his own. So when I see that clamshell, I'm reminded that I belong to Jesus. I'm also reminded you all belong to Jesus. Okay? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for baptism, where you make us your own. Thank you for that blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's an island in the Fiji chain of islands called, uh, and this is, is part of that uh, group of islands, but it's a, a separate group called the Bao Islands. And the biggest of those islands has a church on it. And in, it's a, a primitive church, but the uh, people there have worshiped there. And when you go into that church, there's a huge, rough stone that has uh, an indentation in it. And you, you go there, and I'm told that it's such a, a striking stone in, the, in this church that you have to ask about it. And when you ask about it, you're told that before Christianity came to Bow Island, the people there were a very violent people. Others who came were often captured and they were killed. And where they were killed, somehow their heads were placed in that indentation in this rock and they were bludgeoned to death on that rock. So a symbol of that big rock that became the symbol of that island. Everyone knew that island because it was the island that had the death stone. Well, when Christianity came and people believed in Christ, they said, well, this death stone has to change. And they gave that death stone, a symbol of death and destruction, a new life. Now it became the baptismal font in the church. So what had been a symbol of death now is a symbol of life. Even the stone was given a new life. We could say uh, a Christian conversion to give new life. Well, that stone represents, we could say, its conversion from death and destruction to life. It's a little bit like our baptisms. We're freed from death, destruction, power of evil, and given new life in Christ. Let's look at uh, Jesus' baptism for a minute. Um, there's actually two baptisms in, in the New Testament, and we see both of them here. The first baptism is John's baptism. People came to John in anticipation that the Messiah was going to come. In anticipation of the Messiah coming, John says, prepare yourself. Get washed clean. Repent. Get rid of all the sin. 
because the Messiah is coming. Prepare yourself for that. Jesus came to be baptized by John. And a lot of people questioned it. Why would Jesus? John himself questioned it, if you look in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus is baptized by John. And in it, he identifies with humanity, with our sin, with our fears. He identifies with us. I am um, reminded of a, a scene in John Pil uh, Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. In it, Christian comes to a, a fortress, a castle, and the ca castle is being guarded, and the guard is a, a, a fierce, stern-looking guard, and people have come and want entrance into this ca castle, but they're afraid to go up to the guard and have their name put down. The guard needs to put your name down before he can let you into the castle. And Christian sees that, and Christian goes walking right up to the guard, and he said, set down my name, sir. Set down my name. In essence, that is what Jesus is saying. Set down my name, saying to Almighty God, set down my name. I choose to identify with humanity, with their sins, their foibles, their fears. Just think, Monday morning, we woke up to North Korea possibly testing a hydrogen bomb. We woke up to the collapsing stock market in China, which greatly affected our stock market, so our stock market was collapsing. Uh, again, more fears of terrorism. And on top of it, the church office was flooded. <laughs> Our fears, and subsequently, the sins that come from all those things, trying to protect ourselves, Jesus came to identify with. Boris Pasternak, who is the author of uh, Dr. Zhivago, he wrote this about first century Rome. He said it was a flea market of borrowed gods and conquered peoples, a bargain basement on two floors, and then into this tasteless heap of gold and marble, Christ came, light, and clothed in an aura, emphatically human, deliberately provincial, Galilean, and at that moment, Gods and nations ceased to be, and humanity came into being. Jesus was baptized by John to identify with you and I. The second kind of baptism we see in this text is what we now call Christian baptism. And we see that in the baptism of Christ. When he was baptized, Luke says he went off to pray, and the heavens opened. And when the heavens opened, God is going to do something momentous. The Holy Spirit descends, and Luke makes sure we understand came in bodily form and landed on Jesus. And a voice said, You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Jesus received affirmation and identity. We all know then, Jesus for sure. Now, now Luke has already told us that Jesus was God's son back when Jesus was born. But we have that reaffirmation at his baptism with the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
the second form of baptism now, when we are baptized, it isn't in expectation that the Messiah is going to come. It is in the belief that the Messiah has come. And we're baptized into the Messiah's name, into Jesus' name. Baptized, as, as Paul put it, into his death and given new life. Jesus, when he was baptized, began his ministry. And from it, we understand that when the Holy Spirit came into us when we were baptized, we were given our identity as children of God, but we were also given our call. You're supposed to know as you grow up, people are supposed to affirm in your life who you are to become as one of God's children. Keith Holy from uh, the Synod staff is an assistant to the bishop. He tells the story of uh, when he realized he was going to be a pastor. When he, he starts the story out by saying when, when he knew he was called to be a pastor. And it happened when he was maybe in the sixth grade, Sunday school teacher He's talking to the class, and the Sunday school teacher says, you know, one of you out there, I'm sure God's got to be calling one of you to be a pastor. Immediately, Keith Holy said, that's me. I'm going to be a pastor. So the rest of the, his years, when people said, uh, hey, what are you going to be when you grow up? Keith Holy's classmates were still going, well, I think I'm going to be a cowboy or a fireman. Keith Holy knew right off the bat, I'm going to be a pastor. All the way up, even in high school, people would ask, what are you going to be when you grow up? Yeah, I know, I'm going to be a pastor. Went off to college, seminary, became a pastor. And Keith says, but I've got to stop telling that story because that's not when I was called. I really believe I was called when I was baptized. God called me his child. Place the sign of the cross upon me. I belong to him. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Jesus is calling. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe. I believe. giving thanks for the gift of baptism and the gifts of grace in the world. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, we pray for your church on earth that your spirit guides your children. Unite us in our common, <coughs> in our common call to live out your justice and stand with our siblings of every faith community. Lord, in your mercy. Generous Creator, you have formed and made us to glorify your name. You provide for our safety and welfare. Today we pray for those who live in fear. Save them from violence in their homes and in their families. Gather them, into, gather them from the places where hatred and greed rule decisions of natural leaders national leaders. Ransom your precious children, all whom you have created, and give them peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, give your people of every land the tools and strength to care for one another. We are filled with concerns. North Korea claiming to have tested a nitrogen bomb, federal land takeovers, terrorists killing innocent civilians, war. Give passion to strive for justice to your people. Bless all countries with the courage to follow what is wise and good. Lord, in your mercy. Give strength to those who are overwhelmed by life and surround those who are ill with the comforts of good medicine and good friends. We pray especially for Jamie Alexander, Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Lucy Dolly, Jeff Dykeman, Ron Fells, Debbie Huff, Jim Lampy, Alan Malcolm, Darlene McLaughlin, Elise McCall, Noah Cox, Benita Stamper, the Shorey family, and Kylie Timmerberg. Are there any others? We give you thanks for the lives of the faithful departed and for the assurance of the same resurrection by our baptism into Christ's death. We remember especially the family and friends of John Burke and of Ann Wilbur. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all of your beloved for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory, Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift you the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned into wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again, when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless us in this bread and cup, that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, this morning I remind you that it's our week to commune via intinction, so you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. Hold on to it so you can dip or intinct it into the wine. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your Spirit with us now, that we may set the captive free, use your gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, as uh, your glory has been revealed in the crucified and risen Lord, we pray that you be with our people as they leave from here to bring Holy Communion to those who cannot be here. We pray that they will be blessed as we are blessed by your very life and presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chris. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm really excited to bring uh, two opportunities for you to um, really live out Messiah's mission in the next um, few weeks. First of all, it's highlighted in your bulletin. Bruce and I will be hosting a work day at the Habitat House that Thrivent Financial is building with Habitat. We're gonna be doing that on the 23rd of January and we're really hoping to fill 10 slots with folks from Messiah. We've already heard from a couple of you, but we'd like to get that work day filled up. If you're not someone who wants to work um, and, and swing a hammer and, and do that kind of work, but would be interested in helping to bring out lunch to the volunteers that day, that's also a way that you can help. And then um, I am going to be personally hosting a diaper drive for the Diaper Bank of the Ozarks. And um, my goal is to collect 100 packets of either disposable or cloth diapers. They um, they uh, work with both of those um, types of diapers. So if you'd like to donate a pack um, of diapers just to help out our neighbors in need, I'm gonna be putting a box in the um, Mission Hall. Uh, it will be there by next week and you can just put it there. Or if you'd like to help and um, collect more than that, um, my team of people will come out and collect those diapers that you collect from your house. So thanks a lot. Um, I believe the music ministries are starting on Wednesday again, and um, if you are interested in coming for the Wednesday night supper, I'm going to have a sign-up sheet on the welcome desk. Sarah? Actually, um, addressing that, the, uh, in your messenger, the, a lot of choirs are listed as meeting on Wednesday night, like a lot of the youth groups, but the only choirs that will be meeting will be Joy Ringers and then um, the, the men that are showing up um, for Alleluia Singers at 7.30. Speaking of any men, if you'd like to join us, it's, it's a good time. Thank you, Sarah. I just want to invite everybody tomorrow morning at 10. Um, it's not in the calendar, but I think it was in the midweek. We are starting our Lutheran World Reliefs um, quilt sewing. And tomorrow we have an extra special <clears throat> event that's going to happen. Um, through Mr. Seward, we applied for a Thrive um, I guess it's seed money, and we have $250. So <clears throat> the 80 personal care kits and the 20 school kits that our confirmation group put together last October, that's not right to wait that long to get them off to Lutheran World Relief. So we have the money to pay the postage and we have um, 
20 school bags that we need help with um, just stringing the cord through. And so if anybody wants to come and help do that in addition to quilting, that would be great. See you tomorrow, hopefully at 10. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. There'll be a, an adult Sunday school class in the fellowship hall. Grab a cup of coffee. And uh, if you've received a call about mentoring, there's been some confusion in the church office about uh, how that's coming together. And you'll get, receive a call this week. We'll try to get that started by next Sunday evening. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we well, go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.